One morning, in a small shack deep within a Louisiana swamp, Sister Jones awoke with a start. She looked at her husband, who was sleeping soundly beside her. She was a bit uneasy, for she had dreamed of a beautiful wedding. And she had been taught since the time she was little that to dream of marriage was a sure sign of death. Sister Jones lay there and wondered who was going to be the one to pass from this earthly life to the next, she or her husband Cephas. Well, about a week later, she got her answer. Her husband, who'd been suffering with consumption, took a turn for the worst and slipped from this life into the spirit world. Now the widow Jones was sad to see her husband go, but she should have seen it coming, for she had been warned by the dream. Sister Jones immediately covered all the mirrors in the house soon after her husband Cephas died, because everyone in town knew that if you didn't, the image of the dead would remain in the mirrors. Now Sister Jones loved her husband, but she didn't want his image hanging around in those mirrors. The next day, Sister Jones buried her husband. Afterwards, she and the mourners came back to the house and were just sitting around talking about how they were going to miss poor old Cephas, stubborn though he was, when the front door swung open. A cold breeze filled the entire room, and in walked Cephas. He walked right up to the mourners and said, What's all this about? Y'all act like somebody's dead. Who's dead? Well, needless to say, by this time, the mourners had jumped right up and run clean out of the house. But the widow Jones, who was very frightened, managed to blurt out, N Now, Cephas, you know you're dead. Why are you hanging around here in the living room and not in the graveyard? Dead, said Cephas. How come you say I'm dead? I sure don't feel dead. Well, the widow was quite confused by now, so she simply told him, you may not feel dead, Cephas, but you look dead as can be. You better get back to the graveyard where you belong. Now, even though Cephas was dead, he was still very stubborn. He said, nope, I ain't going back to the graveyard until I feel dead. Then he moved closer to the fire and tried to warm his cold hands and feet, all the while giving the room an icy chill. And from sun up to sundown, day after day, that's all Cephas did, sit by the fire, rocking back and forth. Well, after a few weeks of Brother Cephas just sitting around, things started to get pretty bad in the household. Cephas turned a funny gray color, and he looked real dusty. Every time he'd move, his joints creaked and cracked. As the days wore on, he'd creak and crack more and more. The widow Jones, who hadn't received any company since her husband's untimely return, began to wonder just how long this corpse would last. Their insurance company refused to pay the insurance because Cephas declared to everyone that he wasn't dead. To make matters worse, the undertaker threatened to take back the coffin if Cephas refused to lie in it. Now the widow Jones needed that insurance money awfully bad, and what's more, she was getting real tired of her dead husband sitting around the house, creaking and cracking. She tried to convince Cephas time and time again to get back in the grave, but each time he'd protest, leave me alone, woman. I'm not going back to the grave until I feel dead, and I don't feel dead yet. Widow Jones just knew something had to be done. Well, Cephas had been sitting around the house for about a month before one night, the best fiddler, fiddler in town built up enough nerve to go by and visit the Widow Jones. After all, she hadn't had any company since Cephas came back. 
The fiddler came in and sat on one side of the fire, and Cephas, in his favorite rocking chair, sat on the other, creaking and cracking, still trying to warm his cold hands and feet. They exchanged glances and made small talk, as small as a human and a corpse could make. But after a few minutes of this, it was obvious the two men were rather uncomfortable. By and by, Cephas blurted out, All this sitting around is boring. Let's the three of us do something fun. How about some music, Brother Fiddler? Let's dance and limber up our joints a bit. Still trying to get used to the fact that he was sitting and talking to a corpse, the fiddler got out his fiddle and started to play. When Cephas heard the music, he jumped up, shook himself about, and he started buck dancing around the room. Now that's more like it, he hollered, and he skipped and pranced about, his old rotten bones creaking and cracking even louder than before. But for a dead man, he sure could dance. In fact, he danced so hard that a piece of his arm flew loose and fell on the floor. Not believing his eyes, the fiddler stopped playing and said, Good golly, look at that. Widow Jones grinned at the sight, an idea coming into her head. Play faster, she demanded. The fiddler played faster, and Cephas danced faster. He danced so fast that pieces of bone went flying everywhere. Now by this time, the fiddler was so scared he didn't know what to do. The widow kept hollering, faster, faster, keep playing faster. And the fiddler played faster still. And Cephas danced faster, bones dropping all the time, until all at once Cephas began to crumble to the floor in a big heap of bones. There lay the bones of Cephas, still as they could be, except for his big old bald head. Wyatt kept dancing all by itself, just grinning up at the fiddler. That head just kept dancing all over the floor, just dancing and grinning. The widow hollered, play faster, play faster. Well, this time the fiddler wasn't hearing none of that. He said, oh, sorry, Sister Jones, I gotta run and get me some uh, rosin for my bow. I'll be right back. Well, I'll have you know that the fiddler ran out the front door in a flash, and he has not been seen since. When the fiddling stopped, Cephas's bald head grinned up at his wife and said, What happened to the music? I want to dance more. The widow simply looked at the head and said, The music has stopped, Cephas, and so have you. You've danced yourself into a big heap of bones, and now it's time for you to go back to the graveyard. Well, Cephas's big old eyes looked around and he noticed he didn't have a body. So he sighed a big sigh and said, okay, wife, I guess I do feel dead now. Go on and take me back to the graveyard. So the widow Jones gathered up all the bones and took them back to the graveyard. But she was very careful to lay those bones all crisscrossed like so Cephas could never jump up and dance some more. After that, Cephas didn't get up out of the grave no more. And it's sad to say the poor widow Jones remained a widow the rest of her life. Most folks think it was that dancing head that kept all the men away.